Hello and welcome to Common Driving Test Mistakes 3. In this video I'll be driving a full length driving test route from a test centre in South Birmingham. I'll be sharing loads of useful hints and tips to help you pass your driving test as well as telling you all the things you need to avoid and not do. Along the way I'll be sharing my usual funny stories about pupils and tests that I've done in the past and I'll also be showing you some video clips of events that I've seen along this test route. So let's turn the car on and let's get going, but if you want to see more videos like this, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm here at this test centre, I'm going to put my sunglasses on because it's a really sunny day. I've also got my white shoes on today and my white trainers, so you can maybe see my feet a bit better on the pedal camera. I've also got a dedicated sat-nav camera now, so when we get to the sat-nav part of the test, which is the last half, you'll be able to see the sat-nav a lot better than usual because I've got a proper camera trained on the sat nav. So I'm going to turn on, I'm going to start off looking at the bay parking. Now this isn't so much a how to video, I'm not showing you how to bay park, but what I'm going to show you is one of the most common mistakes people make on the bay parking. So I'm going to get moving now and just imagine the examiner has asked me to bay park in one of these bays to reverse bay park. I'm going to pick this bay on the left and I'll be showing you how to do this in other videos. But for now, I'm going to show you what people do wrong. So, see if you can spot the mistake that I make. I'm going to put the mirror down so I can see the white line. I want you to let me know in the comments below. What do I do wrong here? Because this is an interactive video. I want you to take part in this as much as you can. Watch what I do. I'll turn my glasses off so you can see me better. Watch what I do and see if you can tell why this is wrong. Okay, so why would I fail my driving test for doing that? I'm in the bay, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm perfectly in the bay, dead in the middle, that's fine. One thing I did wrong was I went forward a bit in first gear, because I wanted, it wasn't in reverse. But did you spot the other thing? Well, I'll give you the answer at the end of the video, as long as I remember. <laughs> but please have a, a comment now, just write in the comments below what you think I did wrong there. So why did I fail? I'm perfectly in the bay. I reversed in, it wasn't anything to do with the going forwards, that doesn't really make a huge difference. I pulled the mirror back up, it's not that. What did I do that's so wrong? Let me know. I'll show you another mistake people often make now. This is quite a funny one, I don't mean to, to have a go at learners, it's just a bit of a funny mistake people do. The examiner will say to you, please choose any available bay and reverse into it. It could be the left or the right, it's up to you, as long as you reverse and please finish between the white lines. And people always say, which one, which bay? And they say, any, any available bay. And this is what pupils often do. Now I'm gonna drive up this car park, because normally where you start is actually at the top end of this car park here. So I'm gonna drive up here. Um, you're not actually allowed to park there, because you can only park there if you've got a test. And of course I haven't actually got a test. So I'm going to drive up here. A big tip if you do your tests from this test centre, stay in first gear on the car park. If you get second, it's just about okay, but you can easily struggle, so it's rumbling a bit. It's very, very much, very much better, sorry, to stay in first gear. So imagine you've come out of the test centre, which is just up there, and a lot of people do this. You've been asked to park in a bay, and this is what people do. See what I'm doing wrong? And the examiner says, please park in a bay. Please park in a bay. Please park in a bay. And everyone does this. You've just driven past all the bays. Why do people do that? Does any, can anyone explain that to me? I've had virtually every people I've had has done that. And sometimes the examiner's laugh and said, well, look, you had 200 bays to choose from. You've just driven straight past them all. You can't do it now, you've crossed your bay. Now, normally they would just laugh about it and get to drive around again, but you wouldn't believe the number of people that do that, that go past all the bays, and I know it's probably because they're nervous, they drive past all the bays and completely miss them all. If they ask you to park in a bay, pick a bay. So imagine how the examiner says to me, park in a bay, reverse into a bay. I'll come here, I'll pick this bay here. So I'll go in this one. This time I'll actually do it to a standard where I would pass. 
So see if you can spot the difference between what I'm doing now and what I did last time. Can you see what I'm doing differently? Perfectly in the bay. I know you can't see that, but it's perfectly in the bay in the middle. Dead central in the bay. What was different about that one compared to the other one? Um, by the way, when the car shuts off like that, this car's got start-stop technology. Or is it stop-start? I think it's stop-start. I'll call it start-stop. And when I go handbrake in neutral and I come off the pedals, it shuts down into a standby mode. So I haven't stalled. When I put the clutch down, it comes back on. That's to save fuel and save pollution. Let's get driving now. Uh, but can you see what I did wrong on the second one? Oh, but sorry, wrong on the first one. <laughs> the second one I did correctly. I do make these videos up as I go, this is completely unscripted, unplanned. I know the route, but apart from knowing the route, I don't know anything else. So I haven't planned what I'm going to say or what's going to happen. So I'm going to come out of the test centre now, and I shall be turning left. A lot of people fail on this one. Now I know this, this is quite specific to this test centre, this video, to help my pupils. But it's the same for all test centres really. You can probably see, or you can see to the right from that camera. I could go there. But this is a problem people have on this one. There's an ambulance, so it's a good thing I didn't go there. That's a brilliant example. These things all seem to work out really well in my videos. <laughs> well, if I go now, that black car's coming down quite fast, as you may see from the rear camera. But I'm going to get on with it, get out of the way, and I'm OK. A lot of people there simply don't pick up quick enough. There's often this thing, and I've said this before in videos, about, you know, once you driving test, go slow, take it easy, be careful. Yeah, be careful, but don't be over careful. There's no point in sitting there for a long time. And um, what people often do is a sip and a sip and a sip and a wait. And they're just missing loads of chances. But what also happens, and I can't go in the bus down because it's active at the moment. What also happens is people pull out and they go far too slowly. And I've already done a video about how to move off faster, which can help you on that. But you need to get out of the way there, you need to get on with it, get your speed up and go. Checking the left mirror there is essential. If you don't check the left mirror, you will most likely fail your test instantly there. Anytime there is a gap, you must check the mirror. So on that one, I had a bus lane on the left. Um, a lot of people I've had who have failed because they simply haven't checked the mirror. And yeah, I do teach people to do that, but these things happen. Just because you're ready to pass doesn't mean you will. It's very hard when you're on a driving test. I know because I'm on a driving test now. <laughs> so it's quite challenging. I'm going to take the next road on the left, so I'll do my middle mirror, left mirror, left signal. You notice the view here is really poor, so I'm ready to come down to first gear. I maybe won't need to do it, in fact, yeah I will, so clutch, brake, one, creep and crawl, no, off I go, check in the right mirror, off I go. A lot of people there fail because they come flying around a corner and uh, there's someone coming up. And I've had that many times where we've been coming up this way and someone's come flying around the bend and the whole road could get jammed up. So like this one, less space, less speed. I can't see, so I'll slow down, clutch into first, nothing coming along the road. Now there is something I've got to show you on um, a video clip here. When I get to the end of the road, I was doing a lesson here only a few days ago, and something happened, I'm not going to say a thing about it, I'm just going to play the video, and I want you to please leave your comments below and let me know what you think about this. And if you're watching it on a mobile, you can actually get comments because for years I thought you couldn't get comments on YouTube on a mobile. But if you scroll down, there's a video, then there's loads of other videos, and at the very bottom, that's the comments. So you can leave comments on mobile. So look at this junction, the view is awful. I'm going to turn left and then I'll play the video clip that happened the other day. So again, I can't see clutch, brake, steer, then gear. Notice it should feel very simple, very easy. Check it both ways twice, off we go. So I'll play that video clip now, what happened there, and then I'll come back. <laughs> oh, that's good, isn't it? Just don't put your rubbish. <laughs> oh, that's good, isn't it? Just don't put your rubbish. Okay, so we're back. What do you think of that? Leave your comments below. But now back to the driving test. End of the road left. Middle and left mirror, left signal. Brake, steer, clutch, then gear. That's the technique I called steer, then gear. 
I can go because they're coming in. So I'll move off into second. You don't have to steer in gear, but often that is the good way of doing it. Um, it simply promotes the people. This is me talking as an instructor. It gets people's thinking more about position more than the gear. I'll show you what a lot of people did wrong here at the end of this road. End of the road right. A lot of people do this. You've gone to one far too early. You're nowhere near the right speed for one. So don't worry about the gear. Clutch, brake, roll. Yes, I'm coasting a little bit. Doesn't matter on the driving test. I've done a video about coasting. And all these videos I mentioned, by the way, I will put them, oh, it's raining. I will, any, any video that I mention in this video, so I'm trying to drive and talk and think of everything at the same time. <laughs> any video I'd mention in this video will be linked in the description below. So van coming, mirrors, clutch, brake, into first, brake off, gas clutch, creep a little, checking my mirrors, van driver says thanks, I nod my head, in return, and off I go. Keeping my foot over the clutch so I can change them into two. And I'm going to take the next road on the right. I'm sorry I have to wear these sunglasses, but it is really bright. And if I don't wear these, I'll be squinting all the time and it can be dangerous. So I'm trying to move my head so you can see I'm doing the mirrors, but I am checking the mirrors frequently. So I'll turn right there. There's a bit of a fork in the road. And I'll tell you a funny story about that. One of the, I think it was. Yeah, it was common driving test mistakes, the original video in this series, which I made many years ago now. <laughs> in that video I said, um, when an examiner says turn, it means signal. So if they say follow ahead, you don't signal. And a few weeks after I released that video, I was on a driving test with one of the senior examiners, and I was sitting in the back as my pupil was on the test. And the examiner said, turn right here. And he looked at me, like he was saying, yeah, I've seen your video <laughs> about that. It's quite funny that. I know you might find that you might not find that funny, but that was quite funny the way the examiner was kind of mimicking the things I was saying in my video about his driving test routes. So yeah, the examiners do watch my videos, I know that. Um, quite a few senior examiners watch my videos. I even had um, a comment on one of my videos for I think was it the voice? The voice what is it, the vice chairman or something of the DVSA? One of the really high up people left a comment on one of my videos. So yeah, I am aware they watch my videos. Um, I'm not saying they're approved by them because, you know, I can't say that. But yeah, they are useful. And if you don't know who I am, if you're watching this for the first time, then you know, who the hell is this bloke? Uh, my name is Paul. Sorry, my name is Paul. And um, I've been a driving instructor for 16 years and I've been in the industry for 20 years and I've done roughly I don't know 800 tests a thousand tests I don't know I've lost count I've been on hundreds anyway back to the driving lesson tips so I'm coming down this road now you'll often be asked to pull over on this road so that's what I'm going to do so I'll say pull over on the left and somewhere it's safe so I'll do middle and left mirror I shall signal for these cars coming the other way just after this bump will be good. Now this is a really awkward place to stop, that's the point. I'm going to stop here, and the examiner says move on when it's safe to do so. Handbrake into one, check around, I'm blocking the road, let's go. That's what you should do. Sometimes you're asked to pull up on roads like this, where they know you're going to cause a blockage. And what people do wrong, is they sit there looking in the mirror, and they say, oh look, there's loads of cars, I'm in the way. And I've had people who've sat there for two or three minutes. There's a massive queue all down the road. And the examiner says, please just move on. You've just got to go. They're testing to see if you're aware that you're blocking the road. Now there, when I thank that driver, it is good to thank people on the driving test. If you don't thank people, it can count against you because it shows you're not really aware of what's going on. So if you put your hand up like that, that's an official signal. You're allowed to say thanks. That's perfectly acceptable. If you don't have time, you can nod your head like that. And that's another signal people give. So end of the road, I'm going left. The view is quite poor, so I'm keeping it rolling, keeping going. Off I go. What's the speed on this road? Did you spot it? Well, it says 30 ahead, so it can't be 30. So it's actually 40, but I'm not going to bother speeding it much because it's coming down to 30 anyway. Not long until the sat nav part of the test, so the sat nav will be coming in uh, about, I don't know, 10 minutes time or something like that. So, next road on the left, again I'll check my centre mirror and my left mirror. I 
I'll signal left about now, brake and avoiding as much coasting as I can. Down second, pedals off, round the corner I go. Next road on the right, middle mirror, right mirror, right signal. Then I brake a little bit. And I turn into this road. Now we'll be doing the, uh, the show me question. I didn't bother doing the tell me because if you don't know at the start of the test, the examiner will ask you a question like, can you tell me how do you know if your brakes are working? And again, I've done videos on that with uh, me and the people going through that with an examiner. So the examiner would now say, can you pull up on the left somewhere safe? You want to do it reasonably soon. I won't do it just here because there's a car behind me. But I'll check my mirrors, I've already done that. I'll signal for the car behind to pull up here. One really common mistake people make, there's quite a few here, is first of all, the examiner asks you to pull over and they just keep going. They just keep driving and driving and driving and driving down the road. If they've asked you to pull over, it needs to be reasonably soon. Don't carry on for ages and ages and ages and then pull up, you know, half a mile away. They will normally look for somewhere suitable and then say that when they've seen someone, they'll say, can you pull over somewhere safe? And in their mind, they know where they want you to pull over. Another common problem is people try and pull over too close to the curb and they go smashing at the curb. In particular, if you take your driving test in this area on a Tuesday, three times now, three times, I've had my mirror smashed off on a wheelie bin. Okay, take 22 after the ambulance. 22. Hi, I'm well. But again, when you're on your test, people get nervous and panic. I never really know why people think it's impressive to pull up and smash the curb and blow the tyre. <laughs> of course, people don't mean to do that, but you're not going to impress anyone doing that. They really don't care if you pull up quite wide from the curb. I won't do it just yet because it's a bad place to pull over. But they don't mind if you pull up wide. They would much rather that than have what you call a walk back. A walk back is when the driving test examiner has to walk back to the test centre because the people either isn't up to standard or they've disabled the car. And I've seen this many times, I've actually got about four video clips of the same examiner walking back from driving tests. I'm going to pull up again here, so if you have to pull over, mirrors, no signal needed, there is no point in getting close to the kerb. Pull over like that, I'm about that wide, doesn't matter, it's perfectly fine. You're not expected to get right up against the kerb. Normally, to do that, you would have reversed it in. Because when you reverse, your car, your car steers, your car pivots better like that. It's much easier to back it in than to go forwards. That isn't required on the driving test, but that is often the best way to pull over. If you pull in and hit the kerb with the front of your car, all the weight is at the front of the car. The engine and you, it's all at the front. That's why the front tyres have to be pumped up higher than the rear tyres, or pumped up more than the rear tyres. If you reverse into a kerb, it does hardly any damage at all because there's not as much weight on the back of the car and also the back of the car, the wheels, don't actually turn left and right, they only rotate. So if you go up the kerb with the back wheel first, it does hardly any damage at all. If you hit the kerb with your front wheel, that could be a new wheel, which is about £200, a new tyre, which is £100. Uh, the wheel is a silver bit, by the way, like the alloy and the tyre is a black rubber bit, just to be clear on that. So one hit, you could cause yourself hundreds of pounds of damage. End of the road left, so mirrors, signal. What do you think a lot of people do wrong there? There's another one like that in a moment, where people often get it wrong. But what do you think that was? Well, I won't tell you just yet, but I'll see if you can work that out. They will ask you to pull up on the left here, and I know, yes, it's not the best place, it's because it's on a hill. You must do a hill start on your driving test, an uphill start. So if they asked you to pull over, there are no tricks. I know it's a bad place with the junction opposite, but it's a very quiet little side road. I've had times when people have said, oh, I can't pull over there because it's by a junction. They're not trying to trick you, okay? If they asked you to pull over, you must pull over. There's no tricks. They're not trying to get you to say, I can't pull over there. If they asked you to pull over, just pull over. So end of the road, I'll go left. And I'm going to do that same fault again in a moment, and then the sat nav will come up. So here we go. 
See if you can uh, just gonna hold back this black car. No, no, okay. I'm gonna get out of here. Now, if I can do this safely wrong, I'll do it wrong. I can't, well, I could, I can't, and it's a little bit further back. So in a moment, when you get to about somewhere around here, the examiner will say, at the roundabout, turn right, third exit. And a lot of people signal, now, they go past that road, or if they miss that one, they often don't see this one, and they signal right now. Now I did that, that happened on a mock test I did um, only last week and you can see that again in another video. If there's no one around at all, you normally let off with it because no one would have actually seen the signal. So let's make sure where the bike is going. Um, but if anyone is around, you will normally fail, you test instantly the signalling of passing your road. So I'm going to take the next road on the right, which is quite soon, and that's where the sat nav will begin. So we'll go next right, just coming up here. So I'm braking, leaving my clutch up as long as possible. Can I go before the red car? No, because he's accelerating. So clutch. Okay, no rush for the gear. I can wait one in case they flash, but they didn't. I can go before that silver car coming in the distance. Check my mirrors again, turn in and get out of the way. Like I was saying at the beginning, get out of the way, you don't want to be crawling into the road with a car coming towards you. That's another common thing that people fail the test on. I'm going to pull over here and this is where the sat nav section will begin. Now, if you'll just give me a moment, I've just got to set the sat nav up, I've just got to turn the camera on and get that working and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm back so the sat nav's ready to go. I've also got my lapel microphone on so the sound will be a little bit different now. We're about to go on some high speed roads, so with the other microphone on the dashboard, you wouldn't be able to hear as well. So, if you look at the sat nav, you'll notice it's kind of facing the wrong way. Don't worry about that because often they'll say to you, um, you know, when you move off, it will start working. It should say next left, let's see if it does. Turn left, then turn left. Yeah, I think you'll be able to hear that okay, because I did another video like this. Uh, the nightmare driving test and you could hear it fine on this microphone so i'm going to follow the sound nav now for the remainder of the test now turn left that's it there is one part where it goes a bit it doesn't go wrong but i'll show you what i mean it, it kind of words things a bit funnily sometimes a bit like me i suppose <laughs> but anyway further on it will be saying keep right what it means is don't come off the road it doesn't mean go right it doesn't mean move to the right lane it just At means the end of the road Turn left, then turn right. Then do a left, then turn right. It doesn't turn mean... Turn left, then turn right. It's quite annoying he keeps interrupting me. <laughs> but, yeah. It doesn't mean, um, when it says keep right, it doesn't mean get to the right lane. You'll see what I mean later on when we get to that section. So end of the After road... 100 yards, turn right. Yep, end of the road right. It doesn't say end of the road, but turn it is the end right. of the road. One tip for the sat nav, which the examiners will normally tell you anyway, is to ignore the speed shown. You see how it says 30 on the sat nav? Well, this is a 30, yeah, but in a moment, on my car speedo now says 60, and it's not, it's 30. That one says 30, this one says 60. This car's got a, a camera built in. I've got enough cameras as it is, but it's got a camera built in that reads speed signs, and it's telling me 30, um, 60 because he didn't see a sign, so he's going off the sand nav, it's not. So ignore these speedos, ignore that one, ignore that one. The speedo, the, not the speedo of how fast you're going, ignore the one that tells you what he thinks the limit is. Because often on there, they'll be wrong, especially in Birmingham. Virtually every road in Birmingham has had the speed reduced by 10 miles an hour in the last sort of five years or so, especially in the last two years it's happened. So ignore the speed shown on the sand nav. You can probably see how fast I'm going now on the screen, but that's wrong as well. I'm actually doing 29 now, and that says, what, 26, 27. It's often wrong. So you can't go by that speed out there to, to kind of help you when you're watching my videos, but it's not legally calibrated. So if you suddenly said 90, I'm not doing 90. After 300 yards, turn left. 300 yards, turn left. Where is that? Have a look and let me know. Where do you think it is? Is it that road coming up? What do you think? 
No, you see the blue line? It's further on, it goes left. Ah, I have had Turn people turn into that road, that's a private road. So you're not really supposed to go down there. No, it's not a public road, it's a private road. So I'm going to turn left now when this car's moved a little bit. But yeah, if you want to see an example of how the sand nav can go really wrong, then um, just have a look at the video I did, the nightmare driving test video, where uh, you'll see <laughs> you'll see that it, it easily just goes wrong because sometimes if you don't know the area and the stand nav can be confusing and misleading, it's really really tricky. Um, watch that video if you want to laugh. That was such so fun to make that video. I had a right laugh doing that. I was going around in circles in an area I wasn't familiar with, and it showed me what it was like for people to do a driving test. The may ask you to pull up again here, so I will. I just signal, brake, clutch, and again, not the best road to pull up on, but I will. So I should try and get out of the way as soon as I can. Again, I'm blocking the road, so I check signal, and off I go. That's the point. I know that can annoy the road users, and I'm sorry if that's you in the vehicle behind me, but we have to do it to test people. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of an annoyance for them, but sometimes you are asked to pull up After 300 yards, turn right. in funny places. I have had some examiners and they pull up in such wacky places, you think, what are they thinking? One of them once, you got someone to pull up on a three-lane roundabout, like in the left lane, you're going to park in the left lane of a three-lane roundabout, what was he thinking? He's not an examiner turn anymore, right. <laughs> but um, I don't know what he was thinking with that. So I should turn right, we're going into the countryside section now. And it's at this point, the examiner will say, when it's safe to do so, can you please show me how you'd sound the horn? So when there's no one around, there you go, that's the horn, thanks, that works. I know some people might find that a bit of a daft addition to the driving test, but the reason we do that is because a lot of people send you pass and they've never even sounded the horn, they've got no idea where it is or what it sounds like or when to use it. Another one will be, can you show me when it's safe to do so, how to open and close the side window? One touch down, at the end of the road, turn right. It doesn't matter which window it is, front or back, if you've got electric rear windows. Um, it only has to be a bit, you can put it down a bit, up a bit. It doesn't have to be all the way. As long as you move it down and up a bit, that's fine. And it all depends on the examiner, but most of them are fine. Turn Certainly right. around here, they're fine with, uh, with you doing that. So I'm going to come up to the end of the road. So I hope you're finding this video helpful. If you are, please remember, to give it a like helps me to to know that people are enjoying these videos i do put a lot of effort into this it's taken me a long time to set the cameras up and sat nav and all that so i hope you appreciate me trying to help you and trying to raise the standards of driving on the roads now it's raining again um, i've got the automatic wipers on this car so in case you wonder why i don't put them on they're automatic so i'm following ahead quite a nasty road this one i'm going to slow down just a little bit because it's quite tight Lots of potholes. Now sometimes some sand navs, not the test one, but my sand nav built into the car, it says here, keep right, keep right, keep right. There's no need to really say that because I'm just following the road. But in a moment you'll see what I mean about that when we get to use the test sand nav. So looking ahead, what's coming up? Yep, 50 signs, so I'll wait till I get to there. I can accelerate a little bit. Now remember, you don't have to just blindly follow the speed limit. It would be dangerous at times to do 50 along here. And I had a people doing a mock test the other month, about two or three months back. And we came around here and there was a jogger coming towards us on this side of the road. And there's a really old car, look, it's a lovely old car. What kind of car is that? I'm not sure, but let me know if you know what that is, let me know in the comments. Uh, there's a lot of old cars After around here. Yards, turn right. Because there's a transport museum where they all come from. So 400 yards turn right. Now I don't know what yards are, I don't work in yards, so it means nothing to me. But you can look on the screen and see, it's not that one. I know it's not because I've done this test really loads of times. But it's the next road on the right. You can see, right. see from the arrow at the top of the screen, the arrow shows you, uh, you know, where, where you go next to the very top of the screen. Now on a real driving test, there would be other things I would have done at the beginning. You know that bit where I showed you the video clip? I would have pulled up there, behind the car, and moved away again. I made it on the way back. Um, but this is not so much 
you know, I'm not covering every single element of the test, I'm just trying to give you as many tips as I can. But you will, you'll always be asked to pull over on the left just before a vehicle and then move away again. So I'm going to follow this road. Now this roundabout at the end of the road, we're going to fifth. Now I've got six skis in this car by the way, if you see me going to sixth, that's not reverse. <laughs> so the roundabout at the end of this road is changing a lot as I record this. So I just had a letter the other day in the post telling me that they're actually uh, they're adding a new lane to this roundabout. So this is road closed. I don't know if that's anything yeah, that is to do with it. It's closed overnight for quite a few months and actually adding another lane to the fence where someone's gone off the road. After 500 yards, go right on the roundabout and, and take the fourth exit. You can hear people going off the road into the fence. There's a brand new sign which is tragically going to need a date and again soon because there's going to be an extra lane. So right fourth exit, lots of people mess up here. I'll come to fourth. So mirrors, signal, the arrows on the floor say it's two way. Don't go on that lane, that's what a lot of people do wrong and they go the wrong way towards the roundabout. So I do brake, clutch. Go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. First gear. So when you watch this video, if you're watching this, you know, later in 2019 or beyond, there is going to be an extra lane coming off the motorway and going around this roundabout, I believe. They've just cut down all the trees. There's been a lot of tree felling going on here. So we're on the right fourth exit. I'll stay in this lane. The blue cars move left, which suggests they're going off on the next one. So I could brake hard because they're not behind me anymore. I'm covering the brake, pressing the brake. I can get through. Yep, they've gone off. I'll stay in the right lane. This is where people mess up. You see the left lane, it's for the motorway only. Now, if you go on the motorway, you're in big trouble. And you might be thinking, are the learners are allowed on the motorway? Ah, now here's the thing. As Aston Martin goes flying around, that's how you don't do it. Great example, thanks for Aston Martin. <laughs> you don't go around in the left lane like that, that's not what you're supposed to do. You check the mirrors, blind spot Take come the over, exit, then keep right. And you come off. Signal comes off, goes back on. So then no, I haven't left it on by mistake. That's what you call breaking the signal. So yeah, you might be thinking, well, learners are allowed on the motorway. A learner is only allowed on a motorway with an approved driving instructor like myself. Not with an examiner, not with the parents, not with a trainee instructor. Uh, you're only allowed on the motorway with an approved, that's a fully qualified driving instructor with a green badge, as you may be able to see in the front windscreen, the bottom left of the windscreen. So I'm coming off on this one. You can come off in the right hand lane like that, by the way. If you're in the right lane, you're not stuck, because that does go this way. I'm not going to go to full speed. Yards, keep right. Because I want to talk about things and it gives you more time to talk. So you see this sign says 50 and it's saying keep right, that's what I mentioned before. Max speed 50, what does keep that mean? Right. Yeah, keep right, it means don't go down there. What does keep right, as I wonder to keep right, <laughs> what does max speed 50 mean on that sign? You don't have to, I'm going to go over that limit, now. I'm going to go to off 55, 60. It's a recommendation, I know the road well, I'm not even trying to steer. I'm not skidding around, that's a recommended speed. It's not in a red circle, so it's not legal, you don't have to do it. Now if you don't know the road, certainly do that speed. It's only because I've been on this road probably a few thousand times now. I know that corner is not that bad at all. But there is one on the motorway by Leicester, and if you ignore it, it says max speed 30 if I remember. And I picked up a brand new car one day, I think back in 2005. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. I'll talk about that in a moment. I want to talk about the driving test more. So roundabout ahead, second exit. I will be doing a video about this roundabout. I've already done several with Lucy, one of my pupils. You can watch me teaching her this. But which way is it going to be? It said ahead, second exit. It's Birmingham. It's on the left of the sign, which suggests the left lane. That doesn't always work, but in this case it does. I'm looking at the floor. I'm on the line as far left as I can. A435. And take the second exit. This one. See, the one behind me is getting to be wrong. It's very hard if you don't know the area. A black car swerving around. Stay in the left lane. Stick tight left. Stick left. Stick left. Stick left. Stick left. Keep left. Keep left. Do not move to the right lane. If you move to the right lane, you will fail your driving test. The number of times I've had people do that. I'm just going to go slow again so I can just talk to you more. I'm not bothered about going flat out. I could pick up speed. Not the black car. Not bothered about that. I'm just keeping the speed down so I've got more time to give you these hints and tips. I'll get into the stick though, it should be okay now. 
So yeah, if you cut across the lanes, you will fail every time. And I've been in this car so many times on driving tests where pupils have just cut over to the right hand lane. Now we'll be doing videos about this in the future, but there are two simple rules that you apply. And if you apply those rules to the roundabout, they're easy and they work every time. But if you don't go across the lanes in a moment, I'm going to go ahead, second exit. Now, it will be the middle lane, I know because I've been here every day for the last 15 years or so, but it's the central lane of the three. You go from the middle to the middle. Now, the middle on the roundabout is actually the left as you look at it. Try and imagine the left goes left down a separate road, the middle goes to the left of the two on the roundabout, and the right goes to the right of the two on the roundabout. If you go middle to right, you will fail your test every time. And this is what you call an instant fail, because you fail instantly if you do that. Now, you will not fail for doing like I'm doing 56, 60 miles an hour. The speedos are different. You don't have to go flat out. I could, I could put my foot down, let's pick up. You don't have to do 70, because the limit's 70 on this road for this car. You don't have to. I'd say the minimum you want to do is about 50, but it's raining now, so that's going to be good for the uh, for the lanes. You won't be able to see them. <laughs> that's the problem on this roundabout. So I'm going to get to the roundabout and go ahead. Second exit. Now I'll turn my glasses off because I want you to see what I'm doing on this roundabout. So ahead, second exit. I'm checking around. After eight no one around me. Cross the roundabout and take. Exit. Cross the roundabout out of second exit. This is one even the most experienced drivers get wrong all the time. What you need to understand is people in the left lane often cut you up because they should go left towards Kings Norton, but they don't, they cut you up. So I'll check around, I've got a white car coming up behind. Brake with the clutch up for maximum braking power. I can leave the clutch up until Cross the roundabout now. and take the second exit. I'll select first gear, six to first, no problem with that at all. I can roll. So a white car has done it wrong, that's exactly what you don't do. Do not cut into the central lane from the right lane. I'm checking around, I'll go middle lane. That lane only goes left, so I'm checking the left, there's no one there. Can I go? Yes, so I'll go. I'll check the mirror again, no one there. Signal, check the right mirror, because people often try and overtake. Keep towards this white line, because if the lights go red, and you're in the left lane, everyone will stream past you. There's a bus lane here that you can't go in at the moment. So you've got to keep to that side. You know, that's just how you do it. I will be doing that in other videos, um, but if you watch my other mock test videos, some of my people's failed, and some, not just my people, some people I met off my YouTube channel came and did videos with me and failed that. Check in the left mirror. If you don't check the left mirror now, you often fail instantly, because anyone can be flying down the bus lane. I know they shouldn't be, but it can be. And that's almost the end of the test. So yeah, back to that story I was telling you. I had a brand new car once I picked it from a garage in Leicester. And I was driving it home, and I got to this sign. It was a car, I won't say what kind of car it was, but it's a car that's well known for its steering. These cars are famous for having great steering. I have to say I prefer the steering in this car. It feels better to me. But I was driving it, and I saw this sign, and it said max speed 30. And I thought, it's only an advisory sign, but I've got a brand new car. It's well known for the steering. So I kept doing about 60 round the bend, and I very nearly wrote my car off, which would have, would have been very embarrassing for a driving instructor to have ridden off a brand new car, and I was going too quick for the bend. I wasn't breaking the law, it's legal, but I could hear the tyres squealing, I thought, no way, that was too fast. So don't ignore national, not don't ignore national speed signs, so that sign was distracting me. Don't ignore um, advisory speed signs. If you're not familiar with the road, stick to what they say. Learn from my mistakes and don't make the mistakes yourself. So that's almost the end of the test. I'm going to go back into the centre and I'll talk to you a bit more and then we'll wrap the video up. So I hope that's helped you. That's, what, that's a real... After 400 yards, turn right, then you have reached your destination on your right. Get back into the centre. Check in the mirror again. You can fail instantly if you don't do that because anyone could come flying down. Be careful here, this is specific to the centre. I had a people once who signalled right about now, and there was a car where the white van is and they just pulled out. And my people had to do a real emergency stop. Um, you know, right, real hard. 
You have reached your destination on your right. Emergency stop. Um, so yeah, sometimes people see a signal and they just assume, oh, you've seen all the wrong way, you meant left. I didn't mean left, I went right. And this car pulled out and nearly, you know, nearly wrote us off. reached your destination on your right. So I'm going to follow back round. I'm going to park in the bay. I'll do a forwards bay park. I'm in second now, which is fine just for now. But one is a lot better, so I'll drop to one. So normally you'll go left after driving test centre. But I'll go right off signal because there's a lot of people around sometimes. And it's going to go down the road and I'll do a forwards bay park. And again, if the examiner says, choose any bay and drive forwards into the bay, just do that. Pick one of these bays right now. So OK, I'm going to pick one of these. Moving out, keeping wide, swinging into the bay. And there you go, I'm in the bay. No problem coasting in, that's fine. Have a look at the videos on the screen now. And please watch these other videos, especially the ones about uh, clutch control, coasting, all the things I've mentioned in this video, my other mock test videos, the other common driving test mistakes videos. They're always popular. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon for more videos.